Hi, everybody. I'm just looking over here at the guest list. And what's great here is I'm starting to recognize more and more names that I see who are participating in the panel tonight. But for those of you who may not know me, I'm Jeanette Melisco Romero, and I'm the career advisor for the Business Analytics Program. And if you don't know me yet and you're a student in the Business Analytics Program, I highly recommend you reach out, uh, make an email, let's set up an appointment and chat. Um, and tonight, I'm really excited. We have four great panelists that are joining us. They all came out of the business analytics program. So just as you're sitting here now as a current student, wondering, you know, what am I going to do after I graduate? Where am I going to work? Uh, these four uh, students, these four alumni were in the same position as you, and they all landed really great jobs. So how this panel is going to go is I'm going to possibly ask anywhere from one to three questions. But then I really want to turn it over to you, the students, because I really think it's more important for you guys to have a dialogue with these alumni versus me just asking my questions. So just to kick it off, um, let's have each panelist introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what it is that you do, where you work, and what you do. And Jennifer, can you start us off? Oh, sorry. I was struggling to find the unmute button, so. <laughs> okay, um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Jennifer and I'm working as a business analyst um, in the data operations department at Havas Edge. And we are a TV and media advertising agency that has eight offices in um, across the US. So we do linear TV advertising and we're stretching into audio um, kinetic connected TV fields at Kulu as well. And a little bit background about myself. So um, I got my um, bachelor's degree back in 2019 um, in economics in China. And during that time, I did a few internships. I worked as a um, user experience intern at Natix Games. And after that, I also worked as a BI intern at Ipsos. And after that, I came directly here to Reedy um, as a um, MSBA student. Um, so I was in cohort 2020. And after the graduation, I joined um, Havas as working as a business analyst. Um, so right now, uh, I'm working uh, with um, different other teams as well. Uh, like I work with media buyers, account executives, uh, and other clients, things like that. So um, we're like, my daily work is just like dealing with data and communicating data, data with different apartments. So um, it's really great to meet you guys today and share my experiences as well. So thanks. Thank you for that. Akshay, how about you? All right, uh, uh, thanks Annette. So my name is Akshay, uh, I'm a, I'm an alumni for, uh, I joined the first batch of uh, Ready for MSBA. So it's been a few years since I graduated. Um, my background, so um, I'm a computer science engineer. Um, it, I spent close to three or four years before I did my master's here at Ready. So I was mostly into the management consulting firms. I was at ZS, uh, that's the sales and marketing leader in the biotech and pharma sector. Uh, wherein I moved from ZS to BCG uh, in the mergers and acquisition firm, where I was a senior analyst in the advanced analytics department. Um, after my MSBA, my first job post MSBA was a data scientist right here at Thermo Fisher. I was in the commercial marketing team, um, you know, hands-on designing machine learning models. And most recently, I'm here at, in San Diego at Acadia Pharmaceuticals. I'm a manager in the commercial analytics department. So we are a team of 10 people and, you know, um, we do work ranging from uh, sales targeting, marketing targeting, who the next best customer is to, you know, uh, just uh, insights and analytics generation. So uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I talk to the VP of sales, VP of marketing, um, even the chief commercial co officer when we have our earnings calls to see, you know, um, which segment of our business is growing, which segment of our business is declining, why is it declining? So the why's and how's behind how, how the business is doing and how they need to report it out to, you know, during their earnings calls. So uh, I wear a lot of hats here at Acadia because again, it's a smaller team ranging from data governance to data analytics to advanced analytics to machine learning. 
uh, and to the final you know presentation it could be you know powerpoint or power bi or anything like that so nice to meet you guys thank you christina how about you go next Sorry, I was muted. Sure. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Christina. Um, it's my pleasure here to share with you guys about um, my experience or my job hunting experience. Um, so I am now um, a uh, associate product manager at Too Simple. I have been with Too Simple for almost two years since graduation in uh, UCSD in 2019. I started as an intern here. Um, and um, I started as an intern here as a project manager, and um, I was uh, responsible for it, or I was overseeing a uh, track retrofitting project. Um, basically, uh, that project was to uh, like was kind of prototype to bring up the normal tracks to uh, uh, to autonomous capable tracks. Um, uh, oh, maybe I should introduce a little bit more about uh, Too Simple. We are developing the commercial ready level four autonomous vehicle. And uh, when I joined, uh, we were still in a prototype stage. And uh, uh, and at that time, just like I mentioned, my project was to bring up the trucks to autonomous capable. And after one year of the uh, project management experience, I changed my role from a project manager to a associate product manager. Um, and what I have been doing um, right now is to um, basically to kind of uh, on the user feedback in our our um, autonomous vehicle performance evaluation. And uh, for example, I would work cross-functionally with different teams like the operation team, testing teams, uh, the develop, development teams, uh, triage team, et cetera, to uh, gather feedback from them and to get the feedback to the uh, to our internal team uh, kind of to uh, help them with the requirements uh, generation. And also uh, I am working on the testing case review and do some basic data analysis to kind of um, generate our product backlog list and prioritize our backlog list and then communicate uh, my results with the development teams to help them with their scrum planning. Um, and uh, actually for the whole, like for the whole two years, I didn't really do a lot of like data analysis heavy job because uh, like my role didn't really um, need me to do some very technical data analysis. And it was kind of surprising because I was expe expecting myself to be either a business analyst or data analyst after graduation. Um, but I guess life is full of surprise. And uh, right now, uh, like for those two years, I, I really, really enjoy what I have been doing. And um, uh, hopefully I will uh, like, you know, uh, continue um, growing in this career, like, like this relatively new career to me. Um, and uh, you guys can like, feel free to ask me any questions if uh, you're interested in the project manager uh, side or product management. But um, yeah, that's about me. Excellent. Thank you, Christina. And Yamini, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Myself, Yamini. Uh, I have a little bit different background compared to the rest. So I did my MBA and I worked in a couple of roles in the industry, mostly in business, business oriented and little bit of analytics oriented roles. Uh, after my master's in UCSD, currently I'm working as a data scientist in Freddie Mac. Uh, most of you might not have heard about Freddie Mac unless you know about financial crisis, 2008 financial crisis. What we do is basically we buy home mortgages from all the banks in US and we sell it in the secondary market. What my team currently does is we are a part of housing analytics and research group. We build uh, credit models to decide uh, uh, whether to give a loan or not. Uh, that's a brief about my team. Uh, so in day-to-day -day job, uh, I work on data wrangling, machine learning models, and communicating the results to the clients. Uh, yeah, if you, uh, I'm ready to help if you want any advice on job hunting, because uh, I graduated in the recent cohort and I had gone through that process. I'm ready to offer any help you guys require. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for that. Um, there are, I mean, there are, there are a ton of questions that I could ask you guys that I think students would be interested in. But I think one question that probably everyone um, in the in the panel would be interested to know is to talk more about your Rady experience. So what classes did you find 
most helpful? Um, talk about maybe skills that you rely on a lot in your work day to day. They could be hard or soft skills. Um, if there were activities or events, uh, especially through career services or main campus or, or other, other activities on campus that you found useful, um, please share those experiences. And um, Akshay, how about you start us off? Sure. So, you know, just about my experience at Rady, I think it was really fulfilling to begin with. Um, I came in with certain expectations and, you know, um, at the end of my program, I was overwhelmed with um, whatever I've learned, the people I've met, uh, the professors I met, and all uh, all the education I received here at Rady uh, and overall at UCSG. Um, one of the, a few courses, uh, I know like the courses have changed a lot since we graduated, but I think the theme behind it remains the same, right? Like um, what kind of subjects you, um, uh, you were taught, the theme, behind, the theme behind it remains the same. It's just that there's some branches of it that, that are extending based on how deep you wanna go in that. But uh, during my time, uh, uh, the most important course for me that I'm still using right now is would be customer analytics. Um, uh, which was taught by uh, Professor Vincent Nice. Um, so uh, the, by the, way, Vincent, the machine. Vincent's here. Oh, hey, Professor Nice. Nice to Good see you. It's been a long time. Yep. So yeah, um, he's here, and you know, um, in that course, uh, just learning even the basics like uh, RFM metrics. What does RFM mean? Uh, how to decide the next best buyer? So all these those machine learning models and just the basics of marketing they're like really, really helpful in any company you go because marketing and sales are one of the core um, core um, portions of how a business model is built up because sales is something you, you need to have better sales to have better revenues. And the marketing team needs to decide, okay, how, how do we, what kind of campaigns should be launched to, you know, to engage more customers or to get more customers to you. So, uh, you know, the, whatever we were taught at, in customer analytics course was really, really helpful. I still use those RFM metrics. And, you know, uh, the people I work with, they've been in the industry for a long time. Um, and like, they, they, they do not know what's recency, frequency, monetary, and how we can use them to define who, those, who our best customers could be or who, the, who, who out of a, you know, out of a group of 10,000 customers, who would be the top 5,000 that we should target. Uh, my main job here at Acadia is targeting, so defining out of a million uh, physicians that are in the U.S., who would be the top 5,000 that we should look at. Um, so that's been really helpful. Another important course was business analytics that was taught by, um, I forgot the name, that is Professor really August. embarrassing. Yes, Professor August. Uh, I forgot Professor's name, but that course has really helped me to just uh, uh, define the basics of you know any analytics or just define how if you're reading a model because I work with my teammates build a lot of models I do not get to build models anymore but I have a team and I need to make sure you know the quality of the models that are being built um, how are we defining the model what kind of objective are they solving so making sure whatever my team is developing uh, they have the right right basics the the accuracy all the confusion matrices. Um, they all make sense because when we talk to the customers, right, my end customers are the VP of sales, VP of marketing. Uh, honestly, they do not care about the model, right? They care about the end output. So just between, like, I serve as a middleman to make sure whatever models that we are building for the team um, solve the purposes that the sales and marketing leaders want to solve. I define, I make sure that they're accurate enough so that we can use it for the future. And I, I'm like a liaison between uh, the sales and marketing leaders to make sure that, hey, we have this great model. It, it'll help you solve X purpose. And um, this is how this model is, is going to help you solve that purpose. Um, and, you know, just having those basics strong uh, helps me a lot just to progress, not even from my, uh, from a from a company perspective, but also from an interview perspective, because most of the questions that you get from the interviewers when you're you know, looking for jobs are, are mostly uh, defined on you know, just the basics of how you look at probabilities, how you look at um, different measures, how to make the model more accurate and stuff like that. So those two were the courses that uh, really helped me progress through my career and even find a job in the beginning. 
Thank you. Thank you for that. Yamini, how about for you? What has been most useful and helpful from you or for you uh, from your Rady experience? Yeah, like Akshay said, definitely customer analytics is one uh, one course where you have to pay attention. I know it's hectic, but you definitely have to pay attention to that course because many of the interviews I faced, uh, they ask basic questions, basic fundamental questions, which are like mostly covered in that course or business analytics course, like Aksha mentioned. Apart from that, there was one other course which I took, recommender systems from computer science department. If you want to go into like a data science, core data science area, that's a course I should, I would highly recommend you to take and um, pay attention to. Apart from that, the uh, capstone project, that's one thing which really helped, especially for people who don't have analytics background or who don't have prior work experience. Uh, like focus on the capstone project, do well in the project. There was never an interview where I didn't talk about my capstone project. So that's one of the that that's one of the things I would take away from Rad, like which helped me in my career to, till now. And by the way, I got my job from the, my capstone project. So it's really really important to you know uh, make your mark or focus on those projects. Yes, that does happen. Sometimes employers do pick up students um, either for an internship or for, for full-time employment after capstones. It's not always guaranteed, but it does happen. Absolutely. They were not looking initially, but they still like, you know, if you if you leave a good mark with those with those with those employers, they and you you define that okay, you would be valuable to the team. Um, they relook at those their dynamics and they make sure that they create a role for you um, so that uh, if you you know, if you're, if you make them feel valuable, or if you, if you are really focused on that project. Yeah, absolutely right. Sometimes they don't know that they need you until, until you're there and you show them. Yeah, absolutely. Jennifer, how about for you? Oh yeah. So, um, yeah, as other people mentioned, um, custom analytics is definitely a pretty useful course for sure, because we're beating, we're actually beating models in R. And we're acquiring data through uh, APIs in our, in our company as well. And also I wanna recommend a course called Business Intelligence or something. So that course actually teaches you on um, the SQL knowledge as well as the Tableau. Uh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, um, so in my daily work, part of my job is to actually build the ETL to fit the external data into our own system. So in that process, we would actually utilize the SQL knowledge we learned here at Ready. And also sometimes I will build some performance dashboard as well. And we would actually use Tableau. So those are the two skills that would benefit a lot. And another course would be on um, the web scraping in Python. That's a course that I learned at the very beginning of my cohort. I'm not sure um, how that course in this cohort looked like. But uh, I'm pretty sure all of you have learned that, right? So Coming in our, oh, okay, cool. And from that course, actually, what we learned was not only Python knowledge, but also we learned more about this um, HTML language. So in the marketing field, right now we're more and more uh, transitioning to the digital marketing field. So to be able to do that. To be able to do that, we have to um, actually set up the web tracking on the on the customer's website. Sometimes we will actually um, set up the pics on their site to be able to collect the data. So to be able to understand how to do that, uh, we have to actually know how the HTML language works. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Those are the two courses that benefit me a lot. Uh, I want to add something. Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, like uh, uh, SQL is one of the tool, the most important tools when you when you are hunting for a job. So, like in most of my interviews, that's a skill I was tested on. Like not basic, sometimes even advanced level also. Like most of the screening tests happen in SQL. Uh, in my cohort, SQL was not focused much, but. I don't know how it is in this cohort, but if you are preparing for the interviews, be well prepared in SQL. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Thank you for that. Christina, how about you to share your experience? Yeah, of course. Um, I, th I guess my experience might be a little bit, a little bit different from um, the other uh, three students because like I have been, like just I mentioned, I, I didn't really work very heavily with data. Um, so I think what I got most from uh, my study in uh, Ready was like kind of a more comprehensively um, an understanding of the business and the data because like what I'm doing now, part of the job is to uh, work with the development team. Um, I don't develop and I don't write codes right now, but I need to understand what they are doing. And um, when I'm pro providing the feedback or when I am uh, trying to communicate with our requirements with them, um, sometimes if I don't understand what they're doing and they say like, for example, this requirement is absolutely not uh, achievable, uh, they, they, would ex they would kind of explain why, um, like from the statistic uh, side or from the coding side. Um, and I think um, like my learning in ready kind of provide me um, the ability to understand what they're talking about. So that's during my work. And uh, when I uh, and when I was doing the job hunting, I think uh, the courses that helped me a lot. First of all, like all of the other, like uh, the three guests uh, mentioned, the customer analytics. I put three. I put two of the projects uh, during the uh, customer analytics in my resume uh, because I feel like they kind. I want to showcase the company that I can actually uh, get some uh, like very practical uh, suggestions to them. Uh, after doing the data analytics instead of showing them that I, I know this technique. Um, and also uh, I got a lot of questions during the interview like um, about uh, those projects. And the next uh, uh, class I would uh, recommend is the fraud analytics. Because when I was doing, like when I was interviewing too simple, I was giving, like at first I, I applied for data analyst. So when I was doing the case study, I was giving uh, like the raw data, a lot of data to uh, kind of build a model to give them some suggestions about like what is how do I define a non-compliant driver according to their trajectory and um, that data was a little bit different from what I was doing in other classes because they don't have any column um, all the data was just like at what time stamp um, like what's their uh, latitude state uh, latitude distance uh, away from the center line and I didn't know where to start I don't know how to build models out of this kind of data so luckily I was having the fraud analytics uh, class. And um, during that class, we were learning how to like, uh, like kind of generate variables ourselves. Um, so, um, so I kind of like know, oh, uh, for the lateral distance, maybe I care more about their deviation. Uh, if they deviate from the center line too much, they might be non-compliant. Um, and uh, like if, if that's the only uh, dimension I can use, then how do I generate a convincing um, result from the data? So, um, like, uh, so I kind of used uh, what we learned during the class is to, like, for instance, their standard deviation, their absolute value to create as many. Like, at, at first, I created three values. Uh, is first is absolute, like absolute value. Uh, the second is standard deviation of the oscillation, and third one is uh, kind of their, uh, like, their sun. Uh, and I also communicated with my thoughts with Professor Stephen. Uh, he also gave me some suggestions. He said, uh, maybe I can create as many as I can, like I can thought, I can think of, because there might be different uh, factors that are influencing the, uh, like the uh, score. Um, so I, and then um, I can use the, like the principal component analysis to kind of like to get only three um, uh, for the main score. Uh, and that's what I used. And um, uh, that's how uh, that case study helped me to get the final round of Too Simple. And, uh, but things changed. Like after I got the Too Simple, I used the first 30 minutes to communicate with my interviewer on the uh, case study and the next 30 minutes to communicate my, with my thoughts about projects. So um, I think uh, the next one I would suggest is that if you guys are really interested in the project management, uh, the project management class and the supply chain is, uh, I think it would be useful because during my class or during my work, I kind of um, feel like, uh, like for instance, when you are doing a project, sometimes you need to decide the bottleneck. And uh, that's what I learned during the project management class. And the supply chain class, uh, I, I didn't take that class, which was kind of a pity. Um, but um, during the, uh, during the, work, uh, I found uh, that would be very helpful because when we were retrofitting the trucks, 
uh, we got a lot of like a hardware <clears throat> related things and we need to do some supply chain um, um, management. At least you need to understand and um, be better communicate with that, communicate with our other teams. Um, and out of, outside of uh, like ready, um, I would uh, like what I was doing is I also joined uh, a project at Grad Advantage named Leadership. Because when I first joined Ready, um, I didn't really have a lot of um, experience uh, abroad. So I know that one of my biggest uh, disadvantages that I, my English was not very good. Um, so I wanted to improve it, but I know it's not enough just to uh, you know, talk to like have class and um, talk to students. Um, so when I received the email from Grad Advantage of the leadership, I felt like it's a very good opportunity for me to um, emerge myself in, um, you know, kind of native speaker environment. And uh, that's also another thing I did to improve my uh, spoken English. Um, uh, I think that's about me. Um, I might be a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah, and that's fine because there, there isn't necessarily a one size fits all profile of an MSBA student. And you can see you can come from all backgrounds and different varying levels of skill. And once you come out of the program, you can still go on and find success and find, you know, a good job either here in the United States or abroad. Mm -hmm. um, so listen, like I said, I have a ton of questions I could ask you guys, but I think it's really more important to let the students ask you questions. So I'm going to turn this over to the students now. Um, you know, if you if you can turn on your camera, maybe raise your digital hand and ask a question, or you can type a question into the chat box. Um, so as you've been hearing them, like what questions do you guys have? Who's going to be brave and ask one? Come on, you guys got to have some questions. I think we explained them really well about what we do. So <laughs> they, very good. They know. They they know what to do now and how to go get how to how to go get hired. <laughs> Well, while, maybe while they're thinking of questions, like I said, one big question too I was thinking about asking you guys was, so all four of you are international. And of course, international job hunting in the United States is, is adds another layer of complexity when you're, you're trying to be that final candidate giving an offer. So if you can maybe share some advice that you would give to them about how maybe you can, you can overcome the challenge of being an international student on a temporary work visa, and especially for Yamini and for Jennifer, on top of that, you had to job hunt during the pandemic when it seemed like, you know, the world was falling apart. So um, actually, yeah, why don't we start there? Maybe Yamini, talk about your experience job hunting international in a pandemic. How did you get through it? Well, so you need to strategize when you are job hunting. So there are n number of companies out there, but only few of the companies would be uh, willing to sponsor your visa, would be willing to hire the international students. So, so research a little bit, like maybe if you have any alumni in that company or maybe your friends are working in that company, you know, things like that. And once you shortlist those companies, network with people in those companies, like cold call, random message, message in LinkedIn or like any which way, whichever way possible, like at least maybe, maybe not in the beginning, uh, with time you get an, uh, you get an idea of how to approach people, how to network with people, how to get referrals from people. Once you get into that stage, once you start getting the interview calls up through referrals or some other process, uh, you need to be really, really good at your technical stuff because that's how you differentiate. That's how you can show to the employer that you add value to the company. Uh, so once you do really well in the interview, then I think it's not it's not a big thing that obviously once the employer sees value in you, they'll definitely hire you. Do two things perfectly research a lot, research about the uh, company, network within the company. Once you get the interview, like do uh, uh, do well in the interviews. Like when you network within the, when you network with people, like make sure that you ask them what they, what, 
work they do and if you are interviewing within the same team you ask them what kind of work they do and what uh, what can be expected in the interview once you get an idea of what the team is working on what the company is working on you get an idea of what would be asked in the interviews as well uh so that's very very important because especially in analytics or data science should, uh, apart from sql tests and python tests they would ask you case questions so most of the case questions are based on their current work or based on the problems which the team is currently trying to solve uh so talking with people within the team or within the company really helps you in the interview preparation as well as in getting the reference that's one thing i would definitely suggest and keep interviewing like it's not you, you you might not end up with a offer in the first interview but once you start interviewing once you get a hang of that interviews you land up a job somewhere even if even though you might even though you might not be that much interested in the company but do give the interviews so that you get an idea of how to give the interviews how to talk to the people how to prepare for the interviews mm -hmm. that's one more tip i would definitely give yeah i love that yeah so go and interview even if you don't think this is the company you're going to you're going to land with or accept an offer from like amini said it's a chance to practice and it's a chance to get better jennifer what about for you talk about let's let's go back to what was it june of 2020 and talk about your experience on um, hunting for a job okay so Rule number one, never give up. <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't that what I tell? I tell all my students that, yes, love it. Yeah, so be confident and keep in mind that really has prepared you um, for all the skills that could help you succeed in this job market. You're just not having the, the right opportunity yet. So, and the second, never like be afraid to reach out to people. No matter um, it's a random, random person on LinkedIn or like just reach out to Jeanette for help, things like that. Oh. You know, like when I got a few um, job interviews, I would always reach out to Jeanette. I, I hope you still remember Jeanette. Well, of course I do. I remember, yes. Yeah, you were, you and I went through a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, yeah, every time I got an uh, interview invitation, I'll reach out to Jeanette. Oh, here are the questions that they might ask. Could you help me with this? And after mocking the interview, like it actually built up, built up my confidence while doing the actual interview. And it also helped you familiar, get familiar with the interview process. And it's also good to reach out to people on LinkedIn. Um, even if like sometimes you might not get a referral, but you can also um, schedule a Zoom call with them to be able to understand what they're actually doing, what, skill sets are important, things like that. So those things are definitely useful. And third is just be prepared. Um, so I think during the job interview process, you would always be, be asked a question like, could you walk me through a project you've done? So I think you, like, it would be the best if you start preparing for the story right now, like, Think of a story that you can actually impress people, no matter um, it would be a, st a small story or is actually an achievement in the in a work environment. Just prepare one that would be super beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent advice. Excellent mm -hmm. for sharing that. Christina, how about for you? Because you also you started off as an intern at Too Simple. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, so my experience um, I'll start um, by like, first of all, is getting the chance of interviewing. Um, I prepare very early. Um, like, um, I remember it was like in 2019, early, like in spring, I started prepare. Um, and how I prepare is for like, first of all, to like, uh, try to um, modify your resume, like to walk through your resume with the career ready or to walk through resume with your friends or um, some of the people that are from the career, like from the uh, actually workforce. Because at that time I did have some connections, like um, Jennifer mentioned, I reached out to some people through LinkedIn or some other channels. Um, so I also got some very useful suggestions from them. Uh, they give me a lot of suggestions. And also like uh, 
um, uh, career, like really also give me some, a lot of suggestions around like my resume. Uh, so that is the first step. And the second step is um, try to like, I, like I said, get an interview. Um, like at, at least for me, like I wanted to practice as much as I can. Although like for this company, I do not necessarily want to really go there, but I want to say if I can um, like, um, like to, to uh, actually get the offer because I, like I said, I was a little bit worried about my um, English. So uh, what I did was um, first um, to apply job every day. And second is to reach out to uh, like to those people who are working and to say, if you have any opportunity, then um, uh, could you refer me? Uh, and then we would have a talk and then they would refer me. And the, the third one is like, there were a period uh, that um, I remember it was maybe from um, March or from uh, March to April, I didn't get any interview and I started suspecting myself. Um, I was very down. Uh, so I went to uh, talk to Ray actually. <laughs> Uh, I, I told Ray that I could not get it, get any interview and um, I was kind of worried and I wanted to get an intern before I graduate. And Ray said uh, he had a lot of connections um, so I can just check his LinkedIn and if there is any uh, person's company's position I am interested in, I can talk to him and then he can um, uh, refer me uh, something like that. And I was very happy. Um, but right after that, I got like I got several uh, interviews. I, I like from, like this experience. I just want to uh, show that um, I think it's very important to try to you know um, get every resource you can get to get an interview first, uh, mm -hmm. because that's a step one. Uh, and after you get the interview, then just make sure that you're well prepared. Um, uh, and uh, and the ways like they already mentioned a uh, practice. I think practice is a very very important uh, part. Um, like I, when I got the interview, I practiced several times with Career Ready, um, and also um, because like I got I, I got failed several times. So I talked to, uh, like I said, I I, I talked to one of the uh, worker who was um, um, working in uh, Wayfair before. Um, and um, he, he like we, we talked a lot about like um, like for example, previously he was helping me. Uh, modifying my resume. And then um, afterward, um, he was also like helping me about the like interview we were practicing. And he said he, he can also introduce me some of his colleagues to help me interview. And that, that was very helpful as well. Um, and uh, like for the interview part, I just want, yeah, that's like just practice makes perfect. Um, so uh, when you are preparing for the interview, uh, the first one is to make sure you're very smooth uh, about your resume and your experience, and also to make sure that you are well prepared for the techniques that this role is uh, requiring. Um, like some of them might require SQL, some of them might be Tableau, or some of them might be Python R. Um, just make sure like you're well prepared. Yeah. Thank you. And I think, yeah, I think you raise a great point too. It's, it's about utilizing all the resources available to you. So, you know, of course it's, it's the Ray careers team. It's me, it's Ray, it's getting on LinkedIn, reaching out to alumni. It's utilizing main campus careers too. They're here to support you going to their events, um, signing up and making an appointment with a career counselor over there if you want to. Um, Akshay, so you were from the first cohort and this was at a time when you know business analytics was kind of this hot new field that was coming out and, and every employers knew they needed it but they didn't necessarily know what it was either is it a data scientist is it a business analyst what are we looking for tell me about your experience on the job market sure Janet. yeah that's it's a little bit of everything right it's a little bit of data science it's a little bit of project management it's a little bit of business analytics um, but you know i'll echo i'll echo everybody uh, else's sentiment that you'll go through a lot of rejections. So just be prepared for that. Like that should not dishearten you. Uh, you'll go through the rejections, that's fine, but keep on applying and, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, uh, you'll face rejections, but you know, that's just a part of the deal. Uh, that's how you find jobs. Uh, the second most important thing, and just looking from a hiring manager perspective, when I look at resumes, right, for my team, I look at certain keywords. Uh, of what kind of skills I need and are those skills being mentioned in the resume. So like when you're uh, tailoring your resume for any job, make sure you read the job description really carefully and try to add certain skills 
that the job requires into your resume. So that helps you in two ways. Uh, the hiring, the HR team, when they're uh, looking through resumes, they look for certain key points in the resumes. And if, if you fit a few of those key points, they send it to the hiring manager. And when the hiring manager looks at it, he looks at it from his project perspective. So something like um, having something like, you know, predicting the number of survivors in Titanic from a casual competition is great, right? But how does it help me, right, as a, as a hiring manager? How does it help my job? So you have to uh, modify your resume in such a way that it 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 portrays a picture that it'll help um, the person that you're going to, or help the company that you're going to be hired in. So if it's a marketing job, have some projects or have something in there that shows that you've worked with marketing uh, clients or companies before, and you worked in project that you utilize it, utilize some kind of campaign management tools or uh, some projects you've done on Kaggle that you know predicted the next best customer. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, sales analytics job, make sure that you have something um, in the same theme. So having those key keywords in your resume will help you just get to the first step, right? It'll help you uh, help the HR um, just to uh, sort your resume from all the others that they find irrelevant. And then when they give it to the hiring manager, if it has something that that reson re resonates with them based on just the dis job description that they wrote, uh, it'll be easier for them to you know pick that resume out of out of all those others which have just you know random projects which doesn't even match the the picture that or the the main purpose that the company is trying to hire. Mm -hmm. So those would be the only two points. Thank you, and I think you raise a great point about hearing the word no when you first start applying. I want to do a quick poll with our panelists. How many of you got hired on the first application that you sent? Any hands? No. How many of you got a job offer after your first interview? No. I think it was a 500 for me. <laughs> so it takes some yeah. time. But yes, this, oh. this is a common challenge with just about every student from the program. You apply, you're not hearing back, you're interviewing, you're not getting an offer. But like, what did Jennifer say? Don't give up, right? They all struggled with this too. And if you persist, you will get there. You will find a job. There will be a yes at the end of the tunnel. All right, we've got some um, questions coming in. Looks uh, like I have yeah. uh, I have a question. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Actually, then. No yeah. So, uh, Akshay, uh, as a hiring manager, is it a, uh, like a good idea to include as many as keywords possible in a resume so that I don't have to like tailor my resume for every other job? Like include everything I know or maybe you know, maybe like everything possible, like all the machine learning algorithms. Or is it a good idea to like do that? So it depends on the kind of kind of job you're looking for, right? First, the first point I'll 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 make is like just make sure that your resume is one page. Don't let it overflow because all of us like we're really early in our career, right? If you're 15, 20 years in your career, it makes sense to have like a two pager so that you have a lot of citations or a lot of projects or a lot of companies. Um, to your point of you know having in as much as possible, it's it's good to have that, right? Like if you can fit everything in one page, that's great. If not, just have a few three or four sample resumes ready, just so that, okay, if you're applying for Facebook in their marketing team, there are certain projects that you have listed there where it'll help the marketing team to, if you, if you bring in those ideas. If, you're, if you wanna work for a biotech firm, right? Just have a few projects where you worked in Kaggle on a, on a drug to find the next best customer, the kind of work that we do. Um, so just make sure that the kind of companies you're looking for, it could be a tech company, could be a biotech, could be something like Lumina, um, could be a retail company. So have a few few samples ready so that, you know, you don't have to struggle through changing it every time you want to, but making sure you read the job description really carefully and just try to add points from the description into your resume. That's the key. I mean, like, um, I try to do that, and I know so many other my, my managers or my my peers they do the same thing. So it's kind of a norm. If they see resonating features within your resume and the kind of job they've posted, they'll for sure be interested, and they'll for sure at least get to get you to the first round. Okay, uh, for, following up to that, uh, let's say I have like five six projects, but I don't have a, like a space on my resume, and I put up a GitHub profile or a Kaggle profile. 
Or do hiring managers actually go to that profile to check out your projects or they don't? So again, it kind of, it depends on the type of job you're looking for. If it's a tech company, they would. Like if you're looking for Swipe or um, Facebook or Google, they would. Like they're, if it's a technical role that they, they for sure will, if not by themselves, they'll ask their teammates to, hey, look at this guy's Kaggle profile and see if it's worth, you know, uh, interviewing this person. Uh, if you're looking for a, a mixed, a hybrid role, like a, an analyst, it's it's not super relevant, but it does not hurt to add it, right? Because it's just a link, right? You can add it to the top of your um, resume and it does not take up much space. So it's always nice to have it, but um, some people would look at it based on the type of the job that you're you're vouching for. For sure in tech, you, they would need that. But uh, if you're looking somewhere outside tech, it might not be super necessary. Just my experience. Uh, okay. I, uh, people could have different opinions about that. Okay, uh, and just the last question, sorry. Uh, so uh, Yamini told us about the case study. So I've been giving interviews and like there was like case study in almost every interview. And I feel I still struggle to uh, like answer those. So what are your tips to like actually prepare for it? Is there anybody on the panel, including Akshay, that you went through case studies? Because I know that can be a challenge. Yeah, I'll give you a few points and I'll, I'll let, you know, uh, the others speak to it too. So when you're going through a case study, right, and case study, uh, like when I was back in the management consulting firms, that was the main portion, like you have to go through that case study round to get selected. So, so how you think about that, right? Uh, first of all, you make sure that um, you you confirm with your interviewer that the main objective you're you're trying to solve is the main objective that the interviewer has asked you. Just double check with him. Okay, this is the this is the main objective that we're trying to solve here, right? And do not deviate from that. That's the first. Um, make a lot. I wouldn't say make a lot of assumptions. Make assumptions. They would not never give you the complete information. They would want you to ask questions to them. So make sure you know if do not assume something, but just let the interviewer know. Hey, I'm assuming X, Y, Z. Is is it okay? Um, that way, if you're having an interaction with that interviewer, he'll, he'll guide you to the right path. So if you're trying to assume something that's not important, that person will let you know, hey, this might not be relevant, but if, you, as you, if you're trying to go into that, that path, uh, this is an assumption that might be useful. So yeah, always make assumptions and always ask the interviewer that, hey, is this the right path? Um, take a few minutes, take a couple of minutes to think about it. So when I was interviewing, like I was super nervous and I I, I used to just keep babbling and not take a breath just to think about what I'm saying. So that uh, this is something that's really important in case interviews, just to gather your thoughts and think for a minute or two. The interviewer, the interviewer wants you to think. So do not be afraid to take that time and think and frame your approach. And at the end, you have to get to the objective that the interviewer has, has asked you to solve. So make sure that you connect everything that you're doing to that end objective and do not get lost in, you know, um, different translations. Those would be my, uh, my points. Yamini, yeah, and you want to say something too about case studies? Doing yeah. Case? So the main, uh, first you need to understand why, why do they give case studies to you? So the, what they want to see is basically, how are you going to structure your thoughts and are you making uh, logical assumptions? Are you proceeding? with uh, valid assumptions, things like that. Like Akshay was saying, you need to ask questions and clarify with the interviewer. That's a that's a, the most important thing. And sticking to the objective. Second thing uh, is, um, what I observed in most of the interviews is, um, there is no right or wrong answer. You need to, uh, you need to, uh, structure your thoughts well and you need to present it in, in a structured way that's a that's a main uh, that's an important thing for presenting your uh, for, for solving any case and like what help third thing what helps in the case interview is even before you go to the interview think about what problems the team is doing like i mentioned before think about what business the team is doing or what is what is what are the problems they are trying to solve then you can get an idea of what are the metrics they are using or what are the 
tools they are using or what kind of algorithms or models they are using once you get an idea it becomes little bit easy in the interview when they give some problem to think in those directions for example if you are applying if you are interviewing for amazon or operations team where data where, um, some warehousing team or some operations team you need to uh, you need to freshen up your knowledge with respect to operations and with respect to supply chain basics uh, but suppose if you are interviewing for some media marketing team or maybe um, market uh, maybe meet uh, some marketing team you need to uh, freshen up your basics with respect to uh, like uh, with respect to customer analytics or how we are going to do market mix modeling or stuff like that once you once you get a hang of those basic fundamentals and structure your thoughts well in the interview uh, i think that's good enough for any case interview and practice more even before the interviews practice lot of case questions that helps a lot Young, you have been patiently waiting with your hand up. How about you ask your question? Thank you, Yamini. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing your experience. Uh, I think my question goes to Akshay. Um, you mentioned that you got employed by the partner that you work with for the Capstone project. Um, what is that you did during the project that made you stand out? Like, do you have an idea about that? Great question. Um, something that's really important because like when you're doing your capstone projects, right, you're dealing with um, industry leaders, you're dealing with the director or like the senior manager, which may or may not have, uh, you know, the data science or analytics knowledge that we guys have, right? So making sure that, you know, uh, when you're talking to those partners, uh, you have to um, transform whatever you did. Like everybody loves data models or a data science analytics, at least everybody in this cohort loves it, right? But people don't understand it when you talk to those, when you talk to people in the industry. So um, making sure that you are able to uh, translate your data or your models into something that the end user can understand, that'll be first. And second, do not be shy to talk, or do not be shy to uh, do those presentations that happen at the end. Because that's the time where when you're like when when you're showcasing your actual skills, there could be you know you might have worked really hard on the project, but if if the end person or if the people in the caption project do not know you worked on it, there's like why would they choose you? So make sure everybody gets equal chance at talking, but you know make sure you leave your mark when you do talk on whatever piece you have that you want to. So make sure like you're really fluent in what you're talking. Make sure that you're not, you know, just deep diving into the machine learning or the data science piece of it. Make sure you make the end person understand. If the end person is really technical, that's great. Like you can then talk about, you know, the model that you built and what kind of assumptions that you made. But if the end person, which most more likely is going to be the case, he's not going to be that data savvy or tech savvy. So how you try to explain something to that person is, you know, you leave an impression based on that. Um, so that's something that I did. Like I did a lot of presentations. Um, some of my teammates were shy enough to not be in front. Uh, like do not like that's the that's a no no. Like always be up for it because once you get into the industry, all you have to do is explain what you did to people, and that's what they're looking for. So um, that's something that I advise. Thank you. We're almost out of time, but. Yu Zhang Zhu has a question that uh, was written in the chat box. How should we prepare for take home projects and presentations as part of the interview process? I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, Jennifer or Christina, did you guys ever have to do that as part of your interviewing process where you had to take home something and work on it? Yeah, yeah I actually did. Uh, just like I mentioned, when I got the, to the second round of the interview, um, my interview was to was a take home assignment. Um, and how I did that was, mm, well, I think the first, like it might different from case to case, but from my case is that I first, when I first got the uh, assignment, I felt like it's a little bit hard for me to understand, um, understand um, what they're actually looking for. So I reached out to, um, I reached out to the recruiter uh, to give me more clarification. 
um, on the assignment. I think that's very important. That, that's a very important part. Make sure that you actually understand what they're looking for. Um, and once you understand, like it's okay to ask them questions. Uh, once you understand what they are looking for, and um, then uh, I, what I was doing is to do some research. There might be some uh, papers or might be uh, some online stuff that um, are actually talking about the topic that you're doing. Uh, because when I was uh, like, my assignment was to define the non-compliant driver uh, according to their trajectory. And um, I didn't know like what kind of um, trajectory is non-compliant. So I went to went online to uh, uh, check some paper and there were actually some papers that are uh, defining that what kind of trajectory is non-compliant and how many uh, types are there. So I quote uh, that paper as part of my, um, as part of my uh, like the result in my, um, uh, in my final, um, uh, like the uh, project, like the uh, assignment when I uh, emailed them. So um, so do some research, that's the second one. And also um, it's okay for you to uh, like, to some extent communicate with your ideas with other people. Uh, like I mentioned, when I got some ideas, I feel it might be um, better or it might be good for me to communicate with Professor Stephen a little bit about it because that's what we had we were learning at that time so I can kind of uh, let him know like what what my thoughts are uh, for this uh, assignment and he also gave me some very uh, useful suggestions like uh, because at that time uh, for that uh, for that model it only uh, includes three variables so I only wanted to create three variables for that but then uh, professor uh, Stephen uh, mentioned, maybe you can create as many variables as you can and use the principle uh, comparison analysis to get three of them. That's like, that's a very useful um, suggestions and it actually made my model more accurate at that time. Um, so that's the third suggestion. It's okay to communicate your ideas with some people like to kind of get more thoughts um, because like it's take home, you know, like you have more resources, you have online resource, you have people resource, you can, um, kind of like try to do it as like as good as you can. Um, and the last uh, thing I think I was focusing on is the format. Um, so that might not be that important, but I uh, actually was very careful about my format of the uh, assignment. Uh, I used the RMD and um, like R Markdown. And um, actually I, th I thought my format was relatively good. <laughs> I went online to start a lot of uh, a cheat sheet to like how to better um, shape or how to better write your final reports. Um, so that's my last uh, suggestions for take home assignment. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the last part is that uh, like after you, um, like after you um, get the final reports, you have to uh, go over or go through the case with your next interviewer. So also make sure that you're well, well prepared for that. How are you going, how are you going to tell your story um, and to, um, make sure that um, you also prepare for some of the follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christina. Jennifer, really yeah. quick, I know that you went through several interviews. Um, tell me, tell us about the, the technical assessment part and what was that like for you? Briefly, we've got to wrap up here in about two minutes. Okay, so um, I went through uh, many interviews actually. Um, for my current role, um, I think the only technical part was the, the SQL assessment. And I, I, I think I also have been through um, the technical screen was a company called, uh, I don't remember, but they, they, they also did similar thing. They usually just give you some um, um, SQL tests and some of them might also give you some Python or tests to, to actually see whether you know the language or not. But um, I, uh, I, I think actually a lot of students might have the question about whether I should learn more about R or Python. So it actually doesn't matter. So as long as you can utilize one language to be, to be able to solve the problems, you, will, you would be able to pass the test. Thank you. All right, guys, we are out of time, but I heard the word networking mentioned a couple of times by our panelists. And I know networking can be challenging it can be awkward to try to reach out to somebody, but you have four panelists on here who are on LinkedIn, who are all willing and interested in continuing to have a conversation with you afterwards. So I strongly recommend that you reach out, you send them a message, you connect, 
And hopefully maybe you guys can do some follow-up informational interviewing if you wanna continue uh, talking to them about a particular topic or their experience or what they're doing for their work. Um, so let's just thank our panelists. The guys, thank you so much. This was awesome. I always feel like we run out of time. Uh, we need more time to do these, just this thing as, as the conversation is getting interesting. But guys, I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Vincent, is there anything that you want to say too before we close? You're on mute. It's just wonderful to see uh, Akshay and Yamini and Jennifer and Christina back. Uh, yeah. It's great to see such confident young people. You're young compared to me anyway. Uh, so it's it's fantastic to hear your stories, to hear your successes, to hear about how you persevered. I, I can remember many conversations where students are talking like, I'm not ready. I don't feel comfortable. I'm not confident. Mm -hmm. Tough luck. Suck it up and go do it. Right? Just try. Uh, you know, there's plenty of cases in, in my class where you probably thought, oh, I don't know if I can do this, but you did, right? You followed up, you fought through it, and you made it happen. And you can do the exact same thing with job hunting, right? And so you're going to get kicked in the teeth maybe a couple of times. Uh, just get up, just keep going. Uh, and I'm very proud to see every one of the panelists uh, this, this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm.